Hey, what's up, people? Pizzao here, and I've decided to celebrate this Halloween by doing a month-long series of reviews discussing my favorite Halloween movies. And not my favorite Halloween movies that involve Michael Myers, but my favorite movies that take place on or around Halloween. And I've decided to call the series Halloween Horrors Spooktacular. Now, I could think of no better way to kick off my Halloween Horrors Spooktacular than by discussing 2007's Trick or Treat, written and directed by Michael Doherty. And Trick or Treat is a horror anthology featuring four stories that all take place on Halloween night. And all of the stories bleed into one to tell the bigger story of Trick or Treat. Now, Trick or Treat is an exceptionally well-written anthology. Each of the four stories have enough story behind them to kind of stand on their own legs. There's not a weak link here at all. And even in some really good horror anthologies, you, know, you kind of have a weak, a weak link here and there. Not with Trick or Treat. You've got the story of a murderous high school principal that bleeds into the story of four girls out on the town looking for a howling good time. And that bleeds into a story of a young girl, sort of an oddball, being tormented by the cool kids. And that only serves to raise the dead, let's just say. And that story bleeds into a story involving the great Brian Cox in which he is battling Sam, a new horror icon, a really cool new horror icon. As a matter of fact, his full name is Sam Hain. Little guy in an orange suit with like a burlap sack on his head and a very, very sharp sucker. And as I said, all of the stories are really, really well written. You've got some great dialogue, great characters, really dark sense of humor, really throughout this entire movie that I just really loved got some great acting as well uh anna paquin is great in the film of course brian cox is great in the film oh gosh the actor who played the principal his name escapes me at the moment great performance from him all the performances all around are really great you've also got plenty of the red stuff here everything that us horror fans want including some really nice practical makeup effects some really nice practical makeup effects in this film as a matter of fact and all that culminates into a great horror anthology. I'd put it right up there alongside movies like Creep Show, Tales from the Dark Side, etc., etc., etc. Now, I said this movie contains pretty much everything that we horror fans want and love. And one of the things I love about this movie, one of the things I love about the horror movie sort of community in general, is that this movie was more or less dumped on. DVD and Blu-ray by its studio. This was a movie that was supposed to get a theatrical run. And the studio kind of lost faith in it at the last minute and decided to just release it straight to DVD and Blu-ray. Now, with a lot of horror movies that sort of underperform or sort of, you know, um, slip through the cracks in the beginning of their lifespan, they get recognized as time passes well the horror community really with trick-or-treat just rallied around this movie and made it an instant classic really based on word of mouth people wanted to see a horror anthology a new horror anthology because at this point in 2007 we hadn't had a lot of horror anthologies, really none that I can think of off the top of my head since like Creep Show 2. And that was what, late 80s? I mean, we're talking about a while. We had some 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 lesser budgeted ones that kind of, you know, eh. But you know, we wanted a good horror anthology. We wanted to see this film. You dumped it straight to DVD and Blu-ray because you lost faith in it. You didn't think it would perform at the box office. And we, the horror fans, rallied around it. We lifted it up and we made it an instant classic. It didn't have to really wait at all to become to be given its its, its classic status because we really rallied around it and, and championed the film. And, and now, lo and behold, they're making a sequel. <laughs> so um, I, Michael Doherty, he went on, he directed, he wrote and directed The Krampus, which I liked quite a bit as well. I did a review of that when it first came out in theaters. Go check that video out. But I love Trick or Treat. It's one of those movies I reach for every Halloween season. It's got that great Halloween look and feel about it. 
as I said, great performances, really well written, lots of blood, great dark humor throughout, some really nice practical makeup effects, great performances. It's just, it's a great movie all around. If you've not seen Trick or Treat, you owe it to yourself to go and watch it. If you're a horror fan, you definitely need to go watch Trick or Treat. Um, yeah, I, I can't recommend it <laughs> any higher. And as I said, I can think of no better way to kick off my Halloween Horrors Spooktacular, a month-long um, series of reviews discussing my favorite Halloween movies, my favorite movies that take place on or around Halloween. If you've not seen Trick or Treat, go check it out. If you have seen Trick or Treat, please let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section below. If you like the video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. They're also right around here somewhere. You guys take it easy. And until I see you with my next episode, my next installment in my Halloween Horrors Spooktacular, you guys take it easy. Peace. for you say hello to the internet jeremy hello to the internet